Hi, my name is Drew Miller. I'm the director of the Brentsville Turf Grass Management Program here at Brentsville District High School, and this is LT Turf. Hey Drew, if you had to bring a celebrity here to Brinsville oh, to take care of all of this for one month, what celebrity would you choose? Are we talking like a celebrity in turf or a celebrity like it has to be someone who has no idea what they're doing? Give me one of each. Oh, I don't know. Uh, I'd probably bring Chris Ecton down from he was with Pittsburgh. He's now with uh, Carolina Greensod Farm. Uh, we did have James Harrison on the mower in Pittsburgh when I was there. The line, uh, lineman, the defensive okay. lineman. I, I met him, so I don't need to so bring him So he's at least done it once? He's done he knows the mower a little bit, you know. Maybe Baker Mayfield because of his commercials, although he'd probably kill the grass in about a day. But uh, sorry, Baker. Um, no, I guess The Rock's a good one just because, again, his dedication the amount of time he spends on his craft, maybe he'll do the same if he's in charge of a field, you know? Uh, I know that he's bringing the XFL back, so hopefully maybe he'll focus on natural grass fields over artificial for the XFL, you never know. Because they're all about safety in the XFL. <laughs> <laughs> what is your dream mower? <laughs> yeah. uh, Right now, probably a five gang reel from Toro. And you have all of this. Save me a few hours of my life. You know? There you go. Uh, so we're here on our stadium field. Uh, this was renovated 2011, I believe, was the renovation from a tall fescue to Pacher Bermuda. Uh, obviously, you can see we are uh, not overseeded yet. We keep it at an inch. Uh, all year round. There'll be times where we'll fluctuate with our rye in the spring, but very rarely. Um, as we have 30 plus acres that we're caring for, so it's sort of on the run, trying to make sure everything's still uh, functional, especially with high school students, you know. It's been awesome to see uh, all this done by our students uh, and their hard work and being able to show them all the different aspects of what it is to be a turf grass manager. So this is our brand new greenhouse, state of the art. Uh, our county is very supportive of our program. And we've been trying to do this for like five years now. Um, it is fully automatic, uh, shade covers, everything is all conducted through the computer in the back of the building. It regulates temperature, it regulates uh, airflow, it regulates pretty much everything from any aspect of photosynthesis so that we can be productive and can have a great plant sale that we have every spring. Uh, it uh, is usually very successful. Our other teacher, Mrs. Beard, has done an incredible job uh, the past couple of years. Um, and this is just an asset that has made it way easier and we can go way bigger. So uh, it's been a lot of fun to see the kids in there and we're excited to see what we can do this year with a full year, you know, so. Everything on campus in between and everything, and I was talking to you earlier how it's shaggy a little bit. That's because this is the first day of school actually. And we want our students to actually have a understanding of like this is what happens when people don't take care of their lawns or take care of their fields so coming back from that being able to see sort of again with different things like weed eaters edgers sod cutters and whatnot being able to show them like this is what's possible don't let it get this bad again but you know what to do now i like to say everything from the entrance on the front corner of the building of ours to the back corner of their back of the school it's like 35 plus acres that we all take care of as our program um, with the equipment we have, which starting at Ori is going to break down because there's so much we do with it. <laughs> but it's Toro, so it'll last. <laughs> so again, we've had a rough grow in here. Uh, we 
went in uh, during COVID. It was the heart of COVID. August, right before our school year started, really late. We lost our irrigation two days into the sprigging. And yeah, that was pretty much it for <laughs> our sprigging for that year. But this year we brought it in. Uh, we've had a couple hiccups with some different broadleafs and crabgrass and all the different goosegrass and all the fun stuff, you know? Um, but we've got the Tahoma to take the majority of the area and where we're standing is gonna be a putting green. Uh, we actually just got a greens mower from a local um, golf course a buddy of mine who I went to school with, works there as an assistant superintendent and works for the Nationals. Uh, good friend of mine, so thanks, Well, by the way. <laughs> um, we're talking about how Tahoma, uh, again, versus the patron and everything you can see on the plant you got a bunch of plant tissue coming from the top down to the base uh, which again that scalping and all those issues you have uh, become very limited compared to our patriot i want this on my football field so hopefully one day we'll see <laughs> all right so we are now on uh it's our fourth practice field so fourth practice field um, and again, with everything we do here, I want our students to learn so, as much as they can about all the different areas. Uh, so we did an experiment with the local um, sports turf installer, is probably the right word for it. It's Game Day Incorporated. Uh, Mike Sullenberger donated pretty much the entirety of this field. Great guy, thank you for all your help. Um, so this is the North Bridge. I know, uh, Travis Hogan's got Northbridge, a bunch of other guys in the Midwest like this in the transition zone, um, which everything I've dealt with here has been phenomenal. Um, when you're talking about spring green up and everything, I mean, Tahoma and this were right on par here in Northern Virginia. But we did a dormant springing trial because he wanted to see if it was viable in his business if he could start doing fields where schools had, say, an abandoned field that they weren't using that was overgrown and they can come in, spray it out, or remove it, whatever it is that the school is willing to pay, and then come in in, say, February. They want to see if it would be sort of plausible or usable in their practice. Um, overall, it was very successful. After the North Bridge came in real nice, the second year we decided to go Blue Muta. Um, I know Brian Winka and Dr. Munshaw over at, with Mountain View Seed when he was at Kentucky. They did a lot with Blue Muta. You can see it sort of sticking up with these boat shaped tips and then you have your Blue Muta that is thriving right now in this heat. But it's been pretty incredible to see different things like that that was just like, hey, what about Kentucky bluegrass on Bermuda grass? Anybody ever done that before? And now it's like an industry practice for a lot of different places. So um, I still want to work with it a few more times, a few more seasons I should say before thinking about putting it on our game fields. Um, but I'm very happy with the results. Um, and again, I'm a guy from New York and Pittsburgh with the Pirates 100% bluegrass, and there's not much like a nice striped bluegrass, you know? So I love the ryegrass stripes, but bluegrass is something else, you know? One of the big ones that a lot of people that I know more uh, athletically inclined teachers and in, uh, pr programs like mine Clay is a huge thing. Um, I've had, I think I've had like five or six students that have uh, gone out on to work on baseball fields and every time they show up and they know how to take care of Clay, uh, it, sort of sh it sort of shocks their bosses, you know, um, because again, it's a skill that really isn't something that is uh, expected of kids when they come into the industry, you know. Um, but we got Dura-Edge uh, black stick on our uh, boxes here. You can sort of see it cracking where it's dry and not covered versus again, good moisture. You have the players have spikes. We use our keys, the key in, key out rule. If I can get a key free, nice easy in, easy out. Minimal clay attached to the key, okay? Um, the best thing about this stuff is when we talk about professional clay and everything, it's ready out of the bag, you know? Um, and there have been a lot of more high schools in this area in Northern Virginia that have started to use black stick. I will say because of me, because I recommend it and I sort of teach them how to probably take care of it. The plan is this fall to clear everything out. Um, take chainsaw, bush hog, everything, get it down to nothing. 
bring in a tiller, till up the whole space, get it really even, uh, nice and clean, um, and then hopefully work with a couple different companies and set up a couple different plots or hundreds of plots, whatever they want. Uh, I would love to do a golf green, a really big one, whether it's Ultra Dwarf Bermuda or Bank Grass, working with that. Um, a fairway section, sort of doing tests based on that. Uh, again, we're eventually, hopefully, hopefully building the first turf grass research center. But with all of this, this opens up a whole new door to our program in the educational realm. Realm, excuse me. Um, we've already got commitments from Virginia Tech, Penn State, where we're going to have the Bermuda grasses that are coming out, uh, the blue grasses that are coming out, and testing it again. Where you guys are at in Arkansas, right here in Northern Virginia, we have that sort of back and forth of those really cold, harsh winters to the really harsh, obviously, December of 98 degrees is the average temperature. Um, but again, just really honing in with those colleges and giving our students that opportunity to connect at the earlier stages in high school and just, again, bring that to the next level. Um, so again, that's what we're going to do with this. Um, that's the plan anyways and hopefully eventually in the next year or two we'll have it ready um, but we're super excited to get started on this project in the next couple weeks um, i know a couple of my kids uh franco will love running stuff over so shout out to franco i know he'll love that um but yeah it's it's gonna be the next step to the future of the brentsville turf program so we're excited favorite restaurant tony's new york pizza we're going to dinner there favorite college sports team Oh, Virginia Tech Hokies. What is this? Dream vacation destination. Ooh, that's a good one. My buddy just went to like the Maldives, so maybe that. Russell Crowe or Brad Pitt? Brad Pitt. Favorite YouTuber, favorite YouTube channel other than your own? I don't have one. <clears throat> oh, I, I mean, I don't have a YouTube channel. Oh, I guess the podcast is a YouTube channel. <laughs> Lawn tools, don't worry, I'm just letting you see. Oh suspense. yeah, no, that's cool. I mean, if that's what you, I mean, that's No, what it said, is, so I'm just saying, yeah. like, no, <laughs> I no. didn't realize I had a YouTube channel. No, I knew, I, you know, I knew what you meant. Um, Non-grass ones, Mr. Beast, that's pretty awesome, what he does. You're one of the I'm a, young, I'm a younger guy, many? I'm a younger guy. I literally subscribe to you and Mr. Beast, that's it. It's like it. Wow, that's, I don't do that's YouTube. good company right I there. I don't do YouTube. Dude, Mr. Beast and the lawn tools. That's basically all that you need. All right, Mr. Beast, get on it. Collaboration, <laughs> let's go. Uh, we got a zero turn, 60 inch uh, Z Master 3000 series. Again, I said it before, Toro runs forever. Um, the This one and our grandstand over there, they are our Lifesavers. We use them for everything. Uh, all of the surrounds and everything are cut with this. We use it as our blower for all of our clippings that we have issues with when we can't keep up with our mowing schedule. Uh, post game uh, debris. There's still some out here actually, but blowing off all of our post game debris, making sure that everything is perfect coming into the work week. That way we can mow Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. Uh, roll Thursday, roll Friday, and play Friday night. So um, it's these things, if we lose one of them, we're in trouble. Um, again, and the grandstand is awesome because with everything that we have, um, it's very versatile. Um, being able to stand on the back and really get on here and being able to go like this instead of hitting something with your rops and everything. Um, and again, with our program here, our goal is really to teach all the areas of the industry and show how different machinery works. I've worked with Toro for the Mets, Pirates, Steelers. Again, it's uh, true and true through it all. You know, they're always gonna pull through. Service is fantastic. Um, we've actually started to partner with them. Uh, Shane Sullivan is our local rep and we're, we were, before COVID, gonna take a field trip up uh, with our mowers uh, and service them. They were gonna sh teach our kids how to grind and everything because obviously we don't have this, uh, that luxury I should say here in Brentsville. Rio Master 3100D. I mean, this thing, it runs perfectly every time. Uh, being able to teach kids grease points, making sure the maintenance that we can do, back lapping, little things like that where we can actually teach them here at school. We obviously try or do our best to stay up to date on that. Um, and again, this is our primary mower. Uh, this is the one we use on the game field. Um, and 
game fields, I should say, softball and baseball too. And then the last one uh, we'll show you here. Um, we have the Procore 648. This is a brand new machine uh, to us, I should say. It is an absolute game changer for our program. Uh, we're gonna use it here, obviously, too many times, but we're also gonna use this to fundraise in our community. Uh, not just, again, serve as a uh, sports field construction type of company, but better the overall playability and everything that goes into um, all the athletic fields from Little League up to high school here in the area, you know? Um, and again, we've been, we've been hired by professional companies, uh, professional sports teams, hired for the conversion of Audi Field from an MLS field to a DC Defenders. It was the last one right before COVID hit. Um, so being able to do that with our kids and them doing all the painting and putting that on national television, I mean, it's it's been absolutely incredible to do that for our kids and have them have that sort of pedigree uh, with our program. So real quick, give us like the, I don't know, 30 second overview of what you've done. Where'd you come from? How well, are you here? What's me. the story? <laughs> so I was a failed college baseball player. Got too fat. Don't do that, kids. Um, and so I wanted a way to stay in sports, you know, specifically baseball. Um, and I found out about this uh, turf program down at Tech from my bio teacher in high school. He's like, you can go to school for grass. I'm like, no, we can't. What are you talking about? That's not a thing. Um, but I looked it up and I found a way to sort of stay in sports, you know. Um, and I got down to Virginia Tech, started working on the grounds crew, painting the field, loved it. Um, I went to STMA, so Sports Turf Mayors Association Conference in Denver, 2016, 2015 maybe. Uh, and I was looking at a uh, job board and I saw New York Mets, Matt Brown, I was like, I like the Mets, it'd be pretty cool. Um, and I remember it was the last day before I left because I left a day early. Um, and I'm like rushing around with my bags in Denver trying to find the hotel to interview at. And I'm like short of breath running in and he's just calm, cool and collected in the corner of a bar in a Marriott. And uh, one of the most natural conversations I ever had. I uh, ended up getting a uh, position with them. Uh, not a full-time seasonal job. Um, but with Matt, uh, had a really good work relationship. He's a great guy, great person. Um, and he ended up going to Pittsburgh, and I didn't know that. And he ended up going, um, and I called him, I was like, hey, is there a chance I come back and work with you again? He's like, well, you need to call who's now the head groundskeeper in Milwaukee, Ryan Woodley, because uh, he took my job. I'm now the head guy in Pittsburgh. I was like, oh, that's awesome. Um, and I don't remember if it was me calling him or him calling me, and uh, the Pittsburgh Steelers called me. He definitely called me, Chris. He just called me right now, actually, when we were on the field. Oh, so, that's funny. Yeah, so um, Chris called me because Matt gave me, gave him my number. Um, and I remember I was like, Steelers? Like, where is this coming from? Um, but the thing that happened was, was that there was our restrictions on the internships with both, well, not with the Steelers, but with the Pirates. And so I was going to work half and half. It was really full and full. Um, <laughs> I would work Monday through Thursday with the Steelers and then Thursday through Sunday with the Pirates, all the games, everything like that, um, which I loved. It was great, great experience. Uh, Chris Ecton's one of the best guys I know, one of the greatest human beings you've ever met. Uh, like I said, he just called me, taking care of me, checking in on everything. Um, and. Uh, yeah, that led to me, my last year in school. Um, I knew in the end I would need to find something, whether it was Parks and Rec or something a little less time consuming. I wanted to have a family and everything, which don't get me wrong, you still have a family as a groundskeeper and whatnot, but there are, time, there are hours that you're gonna have to work. Um, and I've told my, well, honest with my kids with everything, you know, you gotta understand it's a industry for your passion, you know? Um, and I went back to get a master's in education, uh, not to do this. I had no idea this was possible. I was like you, I don't know anything of anyone. Um, 
So it was like career, so tech ed. I was gonna be a tech ed teacher like when I turned 50, you know, like a retirement type gig, you know, just come home this area in Northern Virginia. Um, and then I got, my dad's a principal in the county and uh, the head of career and technical education who, um, again, he's a great guy. Doug Wright, thank you Doug for everything. We appreciate all you do. Um, he called my dad to ask about a program that they were trying to set up here that is more tailor-made to jobs in Northern Virginia. So I went in to give him ideas. So I walk in, I'm not really dressed for an interview. You know, I'm, I've got a fertilizer stained, like pullover <laughs> from the Mets and I'm sitting here like, he's like, so what would you do? I'm like, well, I mean, you can have the kids go out, paint the field, take care of all the aspects of turf, landscaping I didn't say but we built that whole area right there two years ago the patio and whatnot not the most sound but again they're kids they're learning um, but different ideas like that <laughs> it's a two-hour conversation he says just wait outside and I was like okay why it's just like, just wait outside I'm like five minutes comes out he's like you have an interview with Brentsville right now I'm like no, I don't I don't what are you talking about? I don't have an interview. <laughs> I'm not. I'm not applying for a job. I'm in the middle of my schooling, and uh, I ended up coming here again. Raggedy is all hell. Not prepared. Don't have a resume. Don't have anything. I'm sitting here like, what just happened? You know. <laughs> and I call my dad because he's the one that asked me to meet with a guy. And uh, I'm like, what did you do? Like, what is this? He's like, I didn't know. Like, I, he was like in the middle of his day at school, because uh, I'm on, I'm home from break. I get here and I'm just like, you gotta have mercy on me, because I have no idea what I'm about to say or if I'm applying even or anything like that. This is not planned at all. I mean, she sat. The cat uh, is phenomenal. She's our principal. She is the one that makes all this possible. She helps out with everything. Um, but I sat down with her at like 12.30 and school let out at 2, 10. We went past the bell, like 30 minutes past the bell. And I'm like, I'm gonna shoot myself in the foot if I don't get this chance. And here we are five years later, it's year five. Um, and I love it, I love every minute of it, you know? When we first started with a couple push mowers to what you guys just saw, you know? But again, it, it's been a crazy ride and got to meet so many amazing kids uh, and yeah I wouldn't change it for the world. So you've seen everything here at Brentsville we were happy to have you guys but I'm beat it's first day of school here at Brentsville and we're getting pretty late here and I need to get some sleep even though I probably won't sleep so I'm gonna need you guys to get off my turf. We're happy to have you. One more. Let's walk and look right at the camera when you're saying it. So that you can hear Sorry. it instead of like... My bad. What? That's a good one. Maybe Carrie Underwood, you know. Just a meter. <laughs>